Today on Air Gun Detectives, we're going to take the mystery out of the Ruger 1022. Welcome to an episode of Air Gun Detectives. I'm JC, and today we're reviewing the Ruger 1022 CO2 air rifle. Yes, the Ruger 1022. Yeah, Umarex was kind enough to come up with a replica of the 1022 that we, well, if you've been around for a while, you grew up with a 22 long rifle that was the Ruger 1022. Um, it's a pretty amazing replica. It's powered by two 12 gram CO2 cartridges that go into the butt of the gun. We'll show you the details on how to load this in a little bit. It also has a drop free rotary magazine that comes out just like the original. Comes right out the bottom. In fact, ironically, I have an actual Ruger 1022 magazine, and if you look at the, they're very similar in size and appearance, especially when you look at the bottom of them. But anyway, they made they did a really good job on this gun. Let me give you a quick walk around at the gun, and we're also I'm gonna display specifications from you from the box. Umarex claims this shoots 700 feet per second with alloy pellets and 650 feet per second with lead pellets. Well, we're going to find that out. In addition, there's accessories for this. Um, it actually takes, on the top of this gun, if you look, it actually takes um, the standard Ruger 1022 aluminum uh, mount and it screws into these four holes. I'll have to give you a little bit of a caution about mounting um, when you put a mount on these, but we'll take care of that in a little bit. For now, let's head out to the range and test this out. Okay, now we're in the backyard range. So now we get to test our Ruger 1022. First thing we need to do is put our CO2s in. This takes two 12 gram CO2s and they go into the butt of the gun. I personally, anytime I'm working with CO2s, I like eye protection. Plus, these help me see a little bit. Anyway, what you want to do first on this, if you'll notice the back on the butt here, we have um, a little um, notch in here. I like to throw a quarter in here and turn that. So what you want to do is turn that 180 degrees and then this pops out and your wrench is built right into the end of it. So what we're going to do is take that little wrench, we're going to Take out the cap to the CO2 chamber, real quick here. It's kind of nice this has the built-in wrench for you. We're going to pull this out, and then we're going to throw in our 12 gram CO2s. I like to always put just a just a dab of Pelgun oil on the end of these. The first one goes nose first. The second one goes the nose towards you. In other words, towards the outer part, so they're hitting butt to butt here. So this one goes in this direction. Then we just simply screw this piece in. And you want to snug it up. Not too tight, not too loose. If you listen carefully, you can hear a little hiss and then I go about a quarter of a turn past that. And what we want to do is drop our little piece back in here. It only goes one way. And then take the quarter and go turn it clockwise back to our position and then you'll notice it's nice and smooth at that point so now we're ready to go the co2 is in the gun i'm gonna go ahead and put a scope on this because i want to give this gun the best chance it can for accuracy and the best way to do that is a scope this does have a nice little flip up sight with a little white diamond on it uh, and it's adjustable it looks like it's adjustable for elevation uh, not windage, not side by side. 
but anyway, it's it's got an, actually a, a pretty decent sight picture on it. But I'm going to go ahead and put a scope on this. But what I want to do is talk to you a little bit about this rail. If you'll notice, there's four holes here. Well, if you look down inside this hole and you move the action, you can see that the action actually comes across both of these last two holes. Um, when you mount this, make sure that your screws are not too long because you don't want the screw to protrude down into, into um, the chamber here. If the screw is too long, it's going to freeze up the action and uh, it won't work. And how do I know this? Because I tried it and this, one of the screws were too long. So what I did is I just left I just left the second uh, to the last screw out. I mounted it just with three screws, which honestly is all you really need. If not, you can just get a shorter screw or grind this one down, however you want to do it. But just keep that in mind. So when you're mounting this rail again, if the screw's too long, it will pinch the action and the gun won't work. So just keep that in mind. And I know some of these Ruger kits that you might get on eBay, they're not expensive. They're, I think they're under $10. But just keep that in mind. You might want to just put the three screws in. Uh, rather than a four. Um, as far as mounting this goes, it's very simple. If you'll notice, this has a curvature on it. This is curved right here. So it actually fits um, the uh, actual circumference of the top of the gun. So it fits perfect. That's why th this needs a specific uh, mount for the Ruger. So let's go ahead and slap that on there real quick. helps if I can see. Let's put this on here real quick. There, there's actually nothing to it. You just drop it on, line up the holes, and then snug it up. And that's it. And you want to check and make sure your action still moves, and it does, so we're good there. All right, I'll be back in one second. We'll have the scope on this thing, and I'm going to show you how to load the magazine, and uh, then we'll see what type of velocity this thing shoots and how accurate it is. So be back in a moment. We, what we want to do is make sure we prevent any accidents, and uh, that's very simple. If you always um, keep in mind you treat the gun as it's loaded so we got that straight anyway other than that keep the gun pointed down range keep it up in the air just don't point it at anything unless you intend on shooting it okay before we get started on this let me show you how to load this magazine first of all we got to remove the magazine from the gun and as we talked before it's a 10 shaft rotary magazine you have to pull this little slide back right here and then the magazine simply comes out you want to lay that face down. If you see the little notches on the back, that's going to be the back of the magazine. So the pellets are going to go in this direction. So you're simply going to drop the pellets down in the open grooves. They fall in pretty easy, just like that. Okay. Boom, boom. This is how quick you load this thing. It's very quick. And then one more, which makes 10. Okay. And then use your trusty little pellet seeder because you want these to be flush with the back of the magazine. So I just push these around just like this. Bam. And we're going to drop this back into the little magazine. Obviously, the openings towards the back. Again, with the grooves. And this little slide, make sure you push it all the way closed because if you don't push this, all the way forward it will not go back in the gun so if you're having an issue where you can't get the magazine in the gun double check and make sure this is slid all the way forward and then it should simply just pop right into the gun as simple as that all right let's do our first shooting we're going to do um, a chronograph test with the uh, lighter weight pellets so stand by one second i'm going to get this crony set up okay we're back we're going to try a crony test here um, ironically, off camera here, I noticed um, this gun was lacking a little bit of power and I opened it, the CO2s up and one of them wasn't pierced. I had a problem with my um, 
I got a cowboy rifle that's made by Humorex. It has two CO2s. How I corrected that problem was as you load the first CO2 in, if you drop a dime in between the two, it creates a little bit more distance. And then when you crank that down, you're assured to get both of your um, CO2s pierced. But if, you're, it's, if it's actually really quiet and you're, you're cranking um, the back screw in to pierce the uh, CO2s, you can actually hear each one pierce. So that's just a little food for thought in case you have some issues. But anyway, let's see what we get on the crony. Um, was having some issues with this earlier. Let's see if we can get some readings this time. We're going to start with the... Uh, I believe we're going to start with the alloy. I'll know. I put five alloy in and I put... Uh, five of the uh, lead in and uh, we'll talk about those let's just see if we can even get a reading okay 700 feet per second right that's an alloy pellet that's exactly what Umarex is claiming so let's do a couple more 686 not too shabby That one was 670. Now I can tell you, you get the high velocity with these, but you don't get the accuracy, and we'll cover that in a little bit. 674. And 664. So that's the first five shots. Um, with the alloys. So hold on one second and let's flip on over and we'll shoot the lead pellets. Okay, now we're going to try shooting our lead pellets. Um, initially I was shooting the 5.56 grain alloys, not accurate at all, and we're going to show you that here in a second because I'm going to I'm going to shoot the uh, the lead pellets. But now I'm going to shoot five lead pellets. Let's see what we get out of our crony with these. I'm shooting the 6.9 RWS uh, super hollow point. So let's see what we get out of those. Six sixty nine. That might have been an alloy that was left in there. Let's. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, six oh four. That's our lead. Six oh four. 1 unfortunately 603 error on that one but you can see we're right around 600 feet per second with the lead ones Let's see where we're at here I apologize about the crony I just think that the lighting's a little off right now and we're out Anyway, so let's just let's just call that a wrap. Around 600 feet per second with the lead, they did get to 700 uh, feet per second with the alloy. However, not accurate at all, and we're going to show that. Hold on one second. Now we're going to do our accuracy test. Um, what we're shooting is the um, RWS Super H points. They're 6.9 grains. They seemed. I went through a bunch of different pellets. They seem to be the most accurate. I'm not going to waste your time with other um, pellets. We're approximately about 20 yards from our target, it's about 19 and change, and uh, this is about the farthest I'd want to shoot this gun. Um, we figured it's averaging in the low 600s with the lead pellets with these, so let's see what type of accuracy we get. I'm going to be shooting this um, in the single action mode, so I'm going to manually cock probably the first five, and then the last five I'll shoot in double action, and we'll see what we get. All right, here we go. That's three, four. Remember, we're looking for grouping here, not just hitting the bullseye. Okay, that's five. Now I'm going to do double action, which is a much harder trigger pull. And in a minute, I'll show you what the trigger pull is.
believe in that is 10. Let's take one more to make sure. Yep, that was 10. So that's our grouping for 10. Now, <clears throat> let's see what it'll do on a, uh, a can. Okay, we got a variety of targets down there. Let's see what type of power we get out of this. And test it for a little plinking accuracy. And there you go. Okay, let's wrap things up really quick here. And uh, I did promise you a trigger test, so let's do that real quick. Let's figure out what the pull weight is on this, okay? So we got my trusty Lyman trigger gauge. Double action first. 11 pounds, 13 ounces. So it's just an under, under a 12 pound trigger. Let's try it now in the single action, which is 3 pounds, 12 ounces. So there you have it. Not a bad trigger pull. Um, probably the little ones probably wouldn't be able to do the 12 pound um, trigger pull, obviously. But the single action, that's going to be user friendly for everybody. My final thoughts on the Ruger 1022. If you at all like the Ruger line of guns, or if you grew up with a Ruger 10-22 long rifle, as I did, you know what was ironic is even when I was uh, in the field and patrol years ago, we carried the um, police uh, version of the Ruger 9mm um, carbine. It was the police version. And that gun actually shot really, really well, and it took the 15-round magazines where some of the guys would carry the Ruger pistols. They were interchangeable, so those were pretty cool. But as far as this gun goes, um, I think it's a must-have. Um, you get about 70 shots of feel on this thing, in other words, for your two CO2s. By the way, if you ever feel like just shooting less, maybe half that amount, drop an empty CO2 cartridge in the butt along with a fresh one, uh, rather than two new ones and you'll get about half the shots and the performance stays roughly the same. So that's another food for thought item. But I would, uh, overall, I would rate this gun um, four stars. The cool factor is solid. It gets full points for the cool factor. Accuracy, hey, at, tw at roughly 20 yards you're shooting under one inch groups. I mean you're not going to hunt with this but it's a perfect backyard plinker. So. I would say get one of these. They're affordable. They're anywhere between $100 and $130 roughly out there. And sometimes there would be some sales where you can get some free shipping on them. But um, I would highly, in, highly encourage um, purchasing one of these. Thanks for joining me for another episode of Airgun Detectives. I would appreciate any feedback you can. Please leave comments. Give us the uh, thumbs up if you like the video. And uh, we'll hope to get some more out to you real soon. Again. Tune into Airgun Detectives, where we take the mystery out of the airgun.